Let's put what we've learned together and review a couple of examples. Here's a typical mesh topology example. We have two root APs on the same layer 2 subnet with a single meshing AP. Let's review the situation with an Ethernet connection between a root AP and a gateway that goes down. The root AP then becomes the meshing AP. The meshing AP evaluates the connection to the root AP2 and makes an association. Meshing AP1, evaluating its options, sees that there is a better path through mesh AP2 and makes a forwarding decision to forward its traffic through mesh AP2 to root AP2. When the backhaul recovers, is evaluated, and if it stays stable for 40 seconds, it tears down its connection to root AP2. After 40 seconds, mesh AP2 returns and becomes a root AP. Let's review another example where we can see what happens with the consensus protocol. Here we have a situation where we have two root APs and two meshing APs. The two meshing APs are the two non-root APs connected with an Ethernet interface and therefore resolve path connections using the consensus protocol. In this case, when the Ethernet link goes down and has been down for a 30 second interval, the root AP relinquishes all its connections. All of its children begin looking for a new uplink. The mesh AP, the map, and the EMAP disassociate and go through the consensus. Let's review another example with a focus on the consensus protocol and what happens to maps and EMAPs when a link is broken. In this example, we have two root APs and two non-root APs. The two non-root APs are wired together and therefore are MAP and an EMAP. The root AP, after satisfying the 30-second timeout, breaks its network connections. All the children of root AP1 start looking for a new uplink. The MAP and EMAP disassociate and go through the consensus protocol. After evaluating the available links to R2, we see that the EMAP now becomes the MAP and the old MAP becomes the EMAP. The roles are reversed. Consider what happens when you add an Ethernet interface between two non-root APs. In this example, we have a root AP and two mesh APs. We connect an Ethernet cable between mesh AP1 and mesh AP2 that detect an Ethernet interface, but it does not have a direct gateway connection. Immediately, both APs enter the consensus protocol. Links are torn down, and after a short time, one AP becomes the map and the other AP becomes the EMAP. The AP with the best path selection becomes the map. Consider what happens when you take a map and connect it to the same layer 2 subnet as a root AP. Here we've connected the meshing AP to the same subnet as the root AP using an Ethernet cable. There are two cases. In this case, when the meshing AP detects the gateway, it disables the uplink. Root AP1 detects the meshing AP via Ethernet beacons and responds with a root message to mesh AP2. Mesh AP2 then disables its wireless uplink. After 40 seconds, Mesh AP2 now turns into a root access point. Consider a situation of a map connecting to a root via an Ethernet and the backhaul is down. In this situation, the root AP does not have a connection to the gateway. We connect a cable between the Mesh AP and the root AP. The root AP detects the Mesh AP and responds to the Mesh AP with a root alert via the Ethernet interface. Mesh AP2 then disables its uplink. Mesh AP2 continuously receives root alerts from root AP1. Mesh AP2's uplink remains disabled. After about 30 seconds of timeout of backhaul going down, root AP2 cannot ARP the gateway any longer and goes into the consensus protocol state. The two APs having an Ethernet connection between the two and seeing no gateway or controller on the same subnet begin the consensus protocol. After a period of time, they resolve into a map and an EMAP, and then search and discover root AP3. Thanks for taking the time to view this training.